Welcome everybody. How do I start this, Aaron? How do you usually do? I don't I've never know. An issue with it. Hello everybody, welcome back to your fourth Oracle SQL tutorial, right? This video and the next videos I like to call the five video database design primer, right? So I'm gonna take basically my 50 part database design series, get rid of all the useless junk in it, and then I'm gonna condense it down into like a five video power database design series within this series. So this video and the next four videos are all going to be database design relating to Oracle database. So get your pull-ups because you guys are big kids now. We're gonna get started right now. This video is gonna be vocabulary. So we're gonna start off with SQL, Structured Query Language. This is the language that we use to communicate with the Oracle database. Right, so to illustrate this, we have us, these stupid little people here that don't know anything about how computers work. Well, at least I don't. And then we have the database over here, right? And we communicate with this database using SQL. That SQL is able to be understood by humans. It's, it makes sense. And the, com the computer or the database can take that SQL and then convert it into machine code. By machine code, it's just lower level code that actually tells the computer to do things like retrieve files. We don't have to do any of this because SQL is able to do that for us because the database understands SQL and we understand SQL. So we talk in SQL to talk to the database to talk machine code to do the, the complicated stuff. Another thing about SQL is it's actually a standard language. So if you go from Oracle database over to MySQL, you probably notice that this also has SQL. That's because SQL is used for every single kind of relational database management system. You're probably wondering, what's a relational database management system? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. So a relational database management system is basically a really fancy word to mean the database. We talk specifically using SQL to the relational database management system. So Oracle, Oracle database is an example of a relational database management system. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're probably wondering what in the world relational means, right? And if you've ever done research on this, you'll get a lot of answers that say it's because relational database management systems have relationships. But I'm gonna tell you that's a load of garbage. That's not why it's called relation. The real reason is because it has what's known as relations. Relations is this fancy mathematical term that they use to basically describe tables. Right, so tables, you know, we talked about tables. They have a table name, columns, and rows. All you gotta know is relations equals tables. All right, now if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering what happens when you have a table and someone doesn't put information in it? I know that's what you're thinking. Well, if that's the case, you get what's something that's called, <laughs> you get something that's called a null or a null. I don't care how you pronounce it. A null is basically the absence of a value. So if you have a table and you have a column name and this person goes in your database thing and tries to put information in and they forget to put their name in and submit it, well, for that row, for that person, there's not gonna be a value there. So to represent the lack of a value, the database uses the term null. That means it's missing a value. You'll often hear the term null value, but that really doesn't make sense because null by definition means the absence of a value. So to have a null value is contradictory. That's like an invisible seeing. Now you're probably wondering, how in the world can I prevent null values from entering my database? Well, there's tons of different ways. For one, they're not always a bad thing, but we'll talk about that later. But a really good way is through database design. Database design is a process we do before we create the database and 
also while we have the database to improve it if necessary, its purpose is to protect the integrity of our database. And what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let me give you a really good example. If we have two tables here, let's say this is a user table or users, whether you use plural or singular, we'll talk about that later, but let's say we have a users table and then we have a, over here, we have a orders table. If we have an order from users, there's some kind of connection here because the user places an order and the order is placed by a user. So there's what's known as a relationship. So this is a relationship. The integrity, the integrity right here, is having this connection. We need to protect that. If we get rid of this, for example, and we have this guy over here, and he buys a hammer. Okay, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but if he buys a hammer, <laughs> and then this user gets deleted, and then it says this hammer was bought by this user and he doesn't exist, that's a problem. That's a fault in the, the integrity of the database. So we got to prevent that. So we design our database in a way that protects the integrity. And we'll get more into that as we go on. So we already talked about relationship. This is a connection between two tables. Now, there's something else that is important to know about tables. You're probably wondering, well, how do you keep every single row in a table unique? Well, that's something known as a primary key. You think about it, we have a table. We have all kinds of different entities in here. Let's say they're trees. We're, we're keeping a documentation of all the trees that grow in our national park or something stupid, I don't know. And we have just multiple trees. Well, how do we keep them unique? Because we could have an oak tree. We could have another oak tree. This one could be six foot. And this one could be six foot. So now it looks like we have a, we have a problem here. Is this tree six foot? and this tree six foot? Or is this a mistake in our database and we actually have duplicate data? One tree in there twice. That's an error. That's not good. So we need something known as a primary key to protect us from that. And generally, it's just a random database generated number. So we'll have something such as a tree ID. And that's just going to be like one, two, three, seven, 12, 48 and basically every tree is gonna have their own ID. So that prevents duplicate data. Continuing on that example, we could have that tree, right? And let's say we're running a tree store and we're selling these trees, right? So we also have a table for sales and we sell that tree to somebody. That means we have a customer. The customer initiates the sale to buy the tree. Well, these are all connected and the way they're connected is by the primary key being referenced in the other table. So these are all gonna be tables. This will be a tree table, a sales table, and a customer table. And they're all gonna be connected with relationships. How though? Well, we're gonna have a tree ID, we have a customer ID, and we have a sales ID. To issue the sale, we're basically gonna say, this sale with the sale ID, also has a customer ID because the sale had to be ordered by somebody. Now also the sale is going to have a tree ID because the sale has to sell a tree. So basically this tree ID and this customer ID is going to be replicated in the sales value, in the sales table. And this is known as a foreign key. Just to kind of illustrate that a little more, we can give a specific example of a sale. We could say the sale ID is seven. The customer ID is 743. The tree ID is 12. Now, we can basically take this and we can build the entire sale from this information. We're saying that the customer that has the ID of 743, let's say it refers to this guy, is buying a tree with the ID of 12. So that refer refers to this specific willow tree or whatever with the ID of 12. So that connects to that. The sale is talking about the sale itself. So this whole thing is labeled sale ID number seven. So we're gonna have three tables in this situation. 
We're gonna have the trees. So we're gonna have the trees. The customers and the sales. This is gonna have a primary key. This is gonna have a primary key. And this is gonna have a primary key. That's because they all have primary keys. Every single table needs a primary key. The sales is gonna have two foreign keys. It's gonna have a foreign key to the trees, referring to their primary key. And it's gonna have a foreign key to the customer's primary key. So now we have foreign key on the list. Now, if you've made it this far through all of this information, I congratulate you, because it's a lot really quickly. So don't get overwhelmed if you are um, falling behind. I have a 50 part video series if you wanna go check that out over all of this information, but much slower. But if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering, when you have these primary foreign key relationships, how do you protect them from being broken? Well, I'm gonna teach you that. That's known as a constraint. So in the tree example, a constraint would be the sale can't have a tree that doesn't exist. Another really good example of a constraint would be preventing somebody from deleting a tree or a customer if it's being referenced by a sale. So you have a sale and it says, oh, this tree was bought by this customer. Well, if someone goes in and deletes that customer, well then, we have an issue because it's saying that this tree was bought by a customer who doesn't exist in the database, right? That is an issue with database integrity, which is part of database design. So when we design a database, we get constraints to protect the primary and foreign key relationships. <laughs> That's getting pretty intense. Now, if you're wondering how in the world does the database keep up with all of this information and process it so quickly when you get all these sales of trees and stuff? Well, I can answer that question. You're wondering about indexes. Indexes are basically when you take a certain column in a database. A column would be a single attribute of multiple entities. So like the name, you can take everybody's name and you can make an index for it. What that index does is allows the database to find that information faster. And we can talk more specifics of indexes in the future, but for now, that's all you really need to know, except that primary keys are going to get an index automatically. So I'm just guessing that you're probably wondering how in the world does a database keep all of the different types of data organized, such as, well, we have phone numbers over here, we have names over here. How does it know what type of data it is? Well, that, my friend, is known as a data type. A data type is basically the kind of data you are assigning for a column. We have this table, and we have a column named name. Well, you should expect that every single value within this column for every single person is letters. So we can assign a data type to this name of string, for example. That's, that's just a kind of data type. That covers all of the basic vocabulary that I covered over the course of like a billion videos in my other courses. So if you need a slower version, check those out. Otherwise, write all these down, get the definitions figured out, study them a little bit, and then move on to the next video. Thank you guys.